Um, yep, I'm Brian, and this is Alexander, or Alex for short. And uh, this talk is kind of, uh, we're going to give a co-talk today. I'm going to do the first kind of part of it, and then I'm going to hand it over to Alex, and he's going to kind of take the second part of it. When we first submitted this talk, we submitted it uh, mainly as a talk about uh, how to enable an uh, Ansible collaboration in your organization. But since we submitted it, uh, Alex decided to join as a co-speaker, and so you're going to get even more demos today than you would have before. So uh, I wasn't really looking earlier. Who is using collections? Can you raise your hand right now if you're using collections? OK, and can you raise your hand now if you're using roles? OK, great. Um, and why don't we get right into it? So as I said, my name is Brian. Uh, as we were introduced, I work with the Pulp team. We'll talk about what Pulp is in a little bit and why you might want to use it uh, if you're working with Ansible. Uh, also, this is Alexander from the Galaxy team. He doesn't have a mic, so he'll talk later. Um, we've been collaborating for about two years, and the reason I'm telling you where we come from is that we don't really work super closely together, and so this has been a pretty organic collaboration, which has been really nice. Uh, we don't work in the same part of Red Hat at all, though we both do work at Red Hat. Um, so this collaboration uh, from our different softwares, uh, Pulp brings to the table the ability to store and serve and collection content in an on-premise way. Because uh, you can already push all that content through Galaxy. If you do it on-premise, things are a little more complicated. We'll talk about that. Um, and Alex has been working with the Galaxy that's deployed today for how many years have you worked there? Two? Yeah, two years. So all, if you're using production Galaxy today, Alex is one of the great people who helped make that possible. So we came together to try to develop something, um, and we want to tell you about it. This is the problem that we're solving. Uh, the issue is that sharing roles and collections across an organization is harder than it should be. Um, we wanted to, I want to unpack a little bit why before we jump into the technology here. Uh, why is this so hard? The first reason is because not everyone wants to share their content, their roles and collections. When I say content, that's what I mean, uh, through Galaxy. Because if they did, then we could push all of our collections and roles to Galaxy. Everyone could consume their collections and roles in all the right places with the right versions. Life would be happy and, and great. But there's a lot of practical reasons why people don't want to do that, and those are uh, very respectable, reasonable reasons. Some people like to put and bake in credentials into their stuff, which is not a great practice, but one that people do. Um, and uh, it may not be appropriate for them to publish everything. People may not feel that they want to publish everything. Um, or perhaps their Ansible content is part of their company's secret sauce. So there's a lot of reasons why people don't want to publish through Galaxy. Um, who today publishes roles through Galaxy? Yeah, or collections either? Yeah. Um, so this is one of the reasons why Ansible is hard. We're all writing roles and collections, but we're not all sharing them. So there you go. Um, also, on-premise Galaxy is not an installable option today. Uh, it's, inst it's open source. You can try to install it. But it's hard. It's really hard. It's really hard. <laughs> um, and so, you know, that's just like not a great option. So we're trying to enable that use case, and we're going to show you about how we do that. Um, but it's especially hard at scale and with different teams. And this is a subtle point, but it's really important. Um, because most people say, oh, getting my Ansible content out to, to the clients that I need, no problem. I have Git. Git to the rescue. And Git's a phenomenal, incredible tool, and I love it. So. And it's going to be part of your workflow either way, because you're going to develop these collections and roles somewhere for your organization. And so you're probably going to keep them in Git at some point. But uh, Git, as a workflow, does not really scale. And so when I say scale, I mean getting more people in your organization to participate in the collaboration. Um, most organizations end up having a small number of people writing Ansible content and just giving it to a larger group of people across their organization to run that content. But to get everyone involved, you want to have as many people who are writing content as can share that with everyone in their organization. And things get really confusing when you have multiple teams producing, like the network team produces the Ansible modules for the networking stuff, and the um, application team produces it to configure the application this way, and they come from different places. And so things get really complicated when you try to do it with Git. Another problem with doing it with Git is that you end up having to maintain the, the list of your dependencies on every client. So if you have like, what, like 100 servers, 1,000 servers, more servers than that, uh, you now have to 
pick and maintain the git reference and tag for every dependency and software that you want on every client. And so from a problem perspective, it's pretty, pretty hard. Um, and discovery is really hard. So say you have, uh, you know, you have all these git trees everywhere. Well, you don't have one place that you can go to look at and discover, hey, what's out there inside of our organization that is uh, already solving this problem that I build off of. So, you know, discovery is kind of a, a hard problem that really prevents people and organizations from becoming more collaborative. And so the title of this talk is about how to enable collaboration. We're going to show some technology, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that you want to get more people involved. And so the more that you keep your workflows tied up in things like Git, which is a great tool, uh, the more it prevents people from becoming involved. Uh, and and if, that's, if you take nothing away from my talk else today, remember that, is that the biggest win for your organization is to get everybody involved. And so uh, the, whole, the whole reason that we're even doing this work is to try to create some tools that make it easier for you to share roles and collections. And Git is great, especially if you have a really smart, really smart people, but if you want to engage this like in your whole organization, that becomes really hard. Um, I spent a lot of time because you really understand the problem before I think you can appreciate why you would even want to solve it. Um, okay, so we have two projects like we kind of said earlier. Uh, so you're going to see two kind of sets of things. The first one builds, or the second one builds on the first one, so they, they go together pretty closely. But um, there's the next generation Galaxy um, that has collection support only. And I'm saying this because I have the mic right now, but this is really your area. Um, and it's a great UI. So actually, at the, towards the demos and later in this talk, we're going to see some really nice user interface uh, design that drives on top of these APIs. Um, and then there's pulp underscore Ansible, or as we, or as I, we just call it, pulp Ansible. Um, pulp Ansible is the software that you can install as this registry on premise. It's designed to be the back end to this front end project uh, that we're kind of co-developing here. So uh, I want to go through the feature set of Pulp Ansible real, just real quickly, and then we're going to do some examples and demos uh, before we get into the UI demos. So these are kind of the four top bullet points about the feature set that Pulp Ansible can offer your organization. So if you install it on-premise, which uh, it installs itself with an Ansible installer, so it's pretty easy to set up, clone the Ansible installer or get it from Galaxy, and uh, you can run it and you'll have a working Pulp Ansible installation. And then with that installation on your on-premise, uh, you can install roles or collections into repositories. Um, Pulp is this notion of everything's organized into a repository, and the concept is that you want to connect your clients in this case, the client is Ansible-Galaxy. It's the CLI that you would use to launch things from Galaxy effectively. And you want to use that same client to uh, install collections and roles from a repository that Pulp is conceptually hosting and has roles and collections inside of it. Uh, Pulp, Pulp Ansible also lets you sync down content from Galaxy. So say you uh, fetch some set of roles, like maybe yearling guys' roles, because um, they, they, those get used a lot. Um, and you bring his roles down, but you don't want to bring anything else down from Galaxy. You can configure Pulp to sync down those roles, and it can do that nightly and, can, and provide a stream in of new roles that are being published on the net, and you can mix and match those in with your uh, content that you, maybe your organization is producing into one repository, and then you hook that up to your clients and they can do their collection installs uh, or also uploads. We'll, we'll demonstrate that too. Uh, any questions? I'm going to stop for a moment for questions. Any questions so far? Clarifications? Okay. Okay. So uh, we're going to go through the concepts of this um, conceptually and then we're going to look same concepts happen and execute with a, with a live demo. So first, what you want to do with Pulp Ansible is create a repository. So you create, a, everything in Pulp Ansible is uh, done through APIs because we leave the UI work to other folks who do it better. And so uh, you would make a, 
um, post call, an API call to this URL, which is going to make you a repository, and we'll just give it a name foo. And here's a little diagram. This is my dinky diagram. It's going to show you what's happening. Uh, so re re every repository has repository versions. Default, you get a re empty repository version zero. And every time you make a change to content in that repository, it generates you a new repository version. And so this enables features like rollback and stuff like that, because it has a very clear record of what was available over time. So that's making a repository. And then uh, there's this concept called a distribution. A distribution, you can think of it as, here's where in the, in the URL path I'm going to make a particular repository available to. Um, and so, for example, he, here, that's the base path of part of this. Uh, base path here is my content. And so uh, when we go to tell Ansible Galaxy CLIs which, uh, where to install it from a path means my content. And so you can have multiple repos, multiple distributions, and offer different kinds of content, different mixtures of the same content at different URLs with one distribution for each. And this is kind of that visual representation. There's a relationship between that distribution and that repository. So then we'll create a remote. So the way these remotes work uh, is that we take a URL from Galaxy. So remotes are a mechanism that you can use to sync content into pulp. You can do this with either collections or roles. So if, there, if you use roles or collections from Galaxy, you want to bring them into your on-premise installation, this is what, what you'll configure. And I want to stop for a moment so that we can look at this. So the way this works is it's all URL based. And uh, if you take one of these URLs, so this is the role, the role side of things here. Uh, this is filtering on namespace with a name of Elastic. And so if you back this up and you give pulp uh, something like this, this actually will mirror all of Galaxy. Um, and we may have taken Galaxy down a few times when we were running some sync testing on this. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, the, the point is, is that um, you're in a lot of control with this URL. You can slice and dice it pretty finely to say, I just want things that start, you know, that are in this namespace or just this name, never newer than this version and all the version classifiers, any field that you, well, not any field, but most of the fields that you see in this API you can filter on. And so uh, depending on the URL you give the remote that is what you get. And every day when it goes to sync, if you do it daily, for instance, every hour or whatever, um, you'll get the new content effectively. And Pulp will bring that in, give you a new version, all that. Uh, similarly with the API here, this is the this is a different uh, API that Galaxy provides, but it's similar in, in its concept. Uh, this is for collections, and this is a specific collection, but you could back this out and sync all the collections, or you could give it filter classifiers with uh, the question mark syntax, same thing. Um, and if you run that sync, you will get content from Galaxy into your Pulp Ansible instance. So then, okay, so this is the dinky slide version of uh, the content coming from Galaxy, and then bring it into the repository. You guys ready? Okay. So the way you do that is with the sync operation. So this is the, uh, an API to the repository that you're, you're telling that repository to do an action, and you're saying use this remote. So you can create any number of remotes, different URL strings on different ones and give them names and then you can say, okay, use this remote on this repository, that remote, whatever you want. And that creates a new version, as you can see in the dinky diagram. And that content is available now. Those are those little orange boxes. And during the import uh, process, there are some quality checks that are run. Um, so the Galaxy and the server has these quality checks. They're like linting checks that are run. It's, it scores your module or your role, or am I saying this right? Yeah. It scores your uh, stuff on a scale of like one to five, something like that, based on quality checks that it has. And this happens with a project called Galaxy Importer. And uh, 
when you import content into pulp, either through upload or sync, uh, we run those same Galaxy importer checks as well. And so you're going to get a similar quality linting checking experience, whether you use the pulp Ansible tools or the galaxy.com services that are there today, uh, galaxy.ansible.com, or uh, the future version of Galaxy. We're, we're trying, to, trying to put the right tools in the right places so you can just use the tools if you want, or if you use one of these other projects, you're going to use the tools anyway because they're all integrated. So that's some LinkedIn checks, a little bit about that. And then this is what this is all about, is delivering content to clients. And so this is the command that you'll ultimately run on all of your clients. And here is where you can see the, uh, I'm using the, let's look at these flags here. So I'm installing a role, so I'm installing it by its name. This is its role name. I'm, I'm giving it a specific version, but you can let the client auto-select the version as well. But this is just how you force a version. And uh, my install didn't have correctly configured SSL, so I told it not to worry about that. And then, but you should not do that. Um, and then this is the, the dash S flag says, Here's the server that you should be communicating with. And so there, this is the point where we're telling the client, no, no, don't go to the, the big one in the sky that you already know about. By default, go over to this other one, and this is how you direct all your clients back to your on-premise uh, installation. So uh, you can also, if you don't want to run this uh, no, long, annoying thing on every command, you can configure them here. And these same options are taken there, so your commands can, you can effectively have an identical experience to what you would have had working with Galaxy. Um, only all this stuff is now on-prem. And here, this is a, an inconvenient uh, line wrap, but this, is, this M is part of my content, which came from uh, the distribution. So, so it's really this last part of the path that can let you host like a large amount of content at a, with totally different content at every path. Um, what a lot of people like to do is bring in all their new stuff and have that available in this like collecting repository, and then they like to test those, uh, that content as it's kind of inbound, and then they promote or copy, whatever you want to call that workflow, to these, uh, to the staging repositories, and then eventually to their production repositories. So you kind of imagine it like a flow, is what a lot of people do. Um, and the idea is you're, you, can, you connect your clients to repositories because it's a little dangerous, but certainly inconvenient, to be moving your clients around to all the different servers what you want to do for safety is connect your clients to like one URL and you want to control what's available at that URL rather than trying to bounce your clients around between all these other endpoints. So uh, this is why we try to create a strong notion of like think about the repository that you want some set of clients to be connected to, make that repository in Pulp Ansible and configure your, that set of clients to, to talk with that repository. This is the dinky diagram for installing. This is what that looks like. Um, collections are pretty similar, and we're going to see all this live in like one, one second here, but it just uses the collection install command. Uh, the way that the names work with collections are different. It's namespace dot collection name. But these switches are the same. Don't do that. And uh, that's how you install collections. And there's the dinky diagram for collection install. I made all the collections purple. Um, okay, so uploading. Uploading, uh, there's a use case, there's an existing Ansible Galaxy CLI where you can upload content uh, straight to Galaxy right from the CLI. And this is especially true with collections. There's a Ansible collection build, uh, init, if you want to make a new collection, which I highly recommend. Uh, then you can do an Ansible Galaxy build and that will take whatever you effectively turn it into a tarball uh, with some special config files. And you can then do an Ansible Galaxy collection publish, and you give it the path to that tarball. That's that, this is that part at the bottom. And uh, similarly here, yeah, see, this is just a really long host name. This is the same thing that we were saying a few minutes ago, like two minutes ago, where you're telling it a specific repository inside of Pulp. And I'm using, this one has, just has a weird name, but it's, it's the same, sorry. Um, I was trying to make all of them called my content. 
But uh, the point is, is that if you run this command, it will upload it into Pulp Ansible, and it will create you a new repository version with just that one new thing in it. And you could have different application teams or different parts of your organization all connected to, you know, a different repository for each of them, and they can just upload content all day, uh, basically. And they don't interfere with each other, and then once they're in Pulp, someone could, in a more controlled way, uh, promote that content from, you know, just as, I mean, even, even like a flow of nightlies, you could just have them upload every night, and then you can promote specific ones after they've gone through testing, stuff like that. Pardon me. So, uh, yep, there's the public, dinky published looking diagram. All right, so let's do some actual things. This. Yes. Yeah, go for it. Oh. Cool. Awesome. You got it? Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so let's actually run some things here. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a Pulp Ansible system, which again, it's pretty easy to get into because you run it with an Ansible installer. Uh, Pulp comes with, it's built on Django and Django REST framework. And so, great, thank you. Um, so you can browse around, uh, you can browse around and see the objects that Pulp creates. So as I run this script, we're gonna kinda check in with Pulp and see what it's acquiring into the system. And then at the end of it, we're gonna do some content installs and some uploads. And we'll sync some stuff from Galaxy too. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Alex. So, you can see it's kind of an empty system. There, um, there's no tasks have been run in Pulp, for example. And what we'll do is we will uh, do a, we'll do a roll uh, install. So this is effectively going to do everything that we just talked about. Make a it's going to make a repository. Thank you. Uh, it's going to make a repository. It's going to uh, make a remote. It's going to make a distribution with the my content part in it. It's gonna, uh, we're gonna sync some content from some roles from Galaxy, just like 10 or 12 roles or something like that. And we're gonna install those uh, using the client here. So what I wanna point out is that um, the script that I'm using here is in a link that on the last slide that I'll put up there and we'll try to get them onto the organizers page if that's a thing that, that config management can. So um, these scripts that I'm running, you'll also have them available as basic building blocks. But even if you don't, uh, I want to point out that the Pulp Ansible docs, we work really hard to keep them great. Um, and so a lot of what I'm demoing today is from this workflow. And this is a kind of a bash-based version, but the ones that I'm showing are Python scripts. Uh, Pulp has, has bindings that are in many languages, so if you don't like Python, you can use Ruby or other languages too. Um, so uh, I guess I'm saying that even though you're going to see a lot of detailed things, all these scripts are available, so don't, don't worry too much about that. Um, so here I'm going to make the distribution. I've already made the repository. Um, uh, no, I'm about, to, I'm about to make the distribution, so I'm going to do that now. Um, this is the URL that I'm going uh, to sync from. And uh, if we look at this URL, we can see it returns two items. So just, just two pieces of content. There's just some test content from Galaxy. Uh, so we'll make the remote. So we do that. Now we're going to perform the sync. So this takes a second. So it synced those roles from Galaxy. And now we're going to run this command here. It's a little bit confusing to see with all the other text here. But um, this is the effectively the same command that we were talking about on the slide there. So we'll run that. And you can see that this uh, has, was able to install right from that particular repository um, syncing through Pulp. Oh, you know what? I never showed you the, the other interface. All right, I'll show it to you on the next one. So next we're going to do a uh, 
collection upload. Let's do a collection upload. So I reset my pulp system again, and that's why uh, that's why on this page it's going to ask me to re-log in. All right, so uh, now I'm going to run a collection upload. So this, what this is going to do is it's going to do similar workflow, create a repository and a distribution, because that's the minimum that I need to connect a client to it. And then I'm going to have a client init and build a collection and then publish that collection into that repository, and we should see a new repository version created. Um, so similarly here, it's going to make the distribution Uh, here's the collection init that it's going to do. It kind of reinvents these like random path names just for my examples here. Uh, so it just called in to build that collection so you can see, or yeah, it was created. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is have that collection built. And then the last thing that we're going to do is have it upload. Just before we do that, I'll show you the state of this. Which is that you can now see that some tasks have been run. And you can see that uh, if you look in repositories, uh, you can see that there's <coughs> the latest version is version zero and it's empty. I told you that a version zero was created at initial time. So as soon as we run this upload command here, it's going to make me a new repository version, version one, and it's going to have uh, just that single collection into it that I have kind of fabricated here. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm looking at version zero. Hold on. Let me go back and look at version one. So now version one, you can see, has one item added, and this was initiated by the client, so it's just kind of showing the inbound progress, and it's got all the information about that. It's kind of its weird HTML snippet renders a little strange, but this is all the information about the collection. Um, so that is the upload demo. And uh, the last thing, um, I think actually I'm going to stop my demos there uh, because the last one that I would demo, but the script is up online so you can try this yourself, uh, would be to do a collection sync from Galaxy and then a collection install. But it's very similar to the role sync install in the sense that it has all the same software pieces and concepts. So I'm going to stop myself there. And Alex, are you ready to do some talking? All right. Okay. Here, check this. It's fine. All right. Oops. All right. Can you hear me? Oh, is it? Okay. All right. Uh, I'll try to speak louder. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Cool. So, uh, first of all, thank you, Brian, for describing how all our backend machinery works. And today I'm going to present you a bit of UI and front end. Uh, so, uh, here you can see. Um, UI, it looks quite similar to Galaxy, uh, as you may uh, be uh, used to it. So uh, it's pretty much the same, except one important difference. Uh, this version of our service works only for with collections. And here it's called Automation Hub, but let uh, um, it not confuse you, because we're talking about next-gen Galaxy solution as a whole, and right now it's running uh, as a part of uh, cloud.redhat.com, it's operational uh, as a part of our future offering. So here you can see uh, Collection Explorer. It's really similar to what we've uh, got used to in Community Galaxy. 
and you may ask why do we want to uh, use this service instead of Community Galaxy? Well, Community Galaxy has support, basic support of collections, but uh, I will get back to this uh, a bit later um, and show you new cool features that this service offers. So first of all, uh, let's start from import workflow. Uh, Brian showed us how to import collection using CLI and API, and now I'm going to use you how to import your collection uh, with UI. Well, uh, you may uh, use similar workflow with, uh, workflow with Community Galaxy. So now I'm switching to my namespace uh, page, and here I pre-created config management camp namespace uh, for purpose of today's demo. So uh, let's support a collection. I'll do and pick my config management comp collection cloud version 001 and yeah it's yeah it has some validation so we we need to rename it yeah to gz So here we go. Yeah. So we're uploading artifact uh, to Automation Hub, or uh, let's call it Next Galaxy. And here you can see now if VPN works all right, we don't have any troubles. Oh, well, what can go wrong with Live Demo? Yeah. So. Uh, Let's switch to another namespace really quick. I have another collection prepared for you for backup purposes. Uh, actually, I have three backups. So what can go wrong with live demo? Uh, all right. So here we are. Here we are. Uh, let's go to this directory and upload another collection demo version 1012. OK, here we are. Uh, it's uh, went really quick, it uploaded successfully, and here you can see uh, import log. So it's really simple collection. It doesn't have much content uh, um, cons uh, comparing to that one that didn't work. Uh, so here you can see our import uh, process. And as Brian mentioned, uh, it runs by Galaxy Importer Project, which runs linting and quality checks. Uh, for uh, uploaded collections, and the result is available to you uh, as, a, uh, as a log output. So you can debug what went wrong. Uh, you can see like quality scores, right? So uh, if our collection uploaded successfully, we'll see yeah that it's completed, but. So now we can go to our collection explorer once again and open our newly uploaded collection. So uh, you can see now uh, here is our collection browser. Um, it looks very similar uh, to what we've got in Community Galaxy except one important detail. And I'll switch to the next tab which shows you documentation explorer. So once collection uploaded to um, this next uh, next gen Galaxy service, uh, it, uh, it collects all documentation from your uh, collection artifact or turbo. It generates it into fancy HTML and uh, allows to uh, browse it in your web browser, which is kind of cool. Here we can see also contents of this uh, collection. We can uh, see that it consists of two roles, one module. So you may uh, know already that collections are not only for roles, but for all kinds of content Ansible supports, including roles, modules, plugins, etc. So here we are. Um, do you have any questions so far? All right. No questions. 
yeah, it's it's kind of cool. So uh, yeah, I can show you one more thing actually. Uh, so if you can, uh, if you notice, um, yeah, let's go to our documentation explorer. So this one works uh, in your browser. It's uh, oh, it requires access to our service, but why don't have it offline? So we actually solve this problem for you. And there is another repository, which is called Collection Explorer. Uh, it's still a bit early, uh, so you may need to build it for yourself. And we are building, uh, we are preparing artifacts. So you can, uh, it runs on uh, Electron and renders the very same documentation, but offline. So you can run it as a desktop application and generate and browse documentation for all of the, uh, all installed roles on your machine. So do you have any more questions? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, that's probably a good segue into kind of our goals for going forward, um, which is that uh, we want to make the UI that you just saw and the APIs that are behind it to be as easy to use as possible. Uh, it's free and open source 100% end to end. Uh, there's no part of it that's held back. and so. Our goal is to um, make this tool set available to everyone very easily. Uh, so uh, whether you want to be early or late in that process, whatever you, you're willing to do. Um, but uh, the mailing list is a great way to get a hold of us. Uh, we, I develop on Pulp Ansible, and there are maybe like two other people who are very active on it. And then uh, Alex is on a team with maybe like five or six people, something like that. And so just normal open source collaboration would be great. Uh, mailing lists, IRC, happy to talk with you here as well. Yes. Yes. And part of it is, yeah, and just to recap over, like, why? Like, all this trouble, why? Um, maintaining that requirements file across n number of clients when n is really large is hard. And it's potentially dangerous, especially when you need to roll back quick. Um, and so that's, it's just management from the middle. It's just easier when you get to a certain point. So, yeah, your understanding is correct. Yeah, I mean, people use this technology to deliver content to their customers. Um, they definitely, people definitely do that. Um, my understanding is the government of Canada is shipping it to their different sites um, and moving content around. People also like to move this around between various points of presence because you can sync, Pulp Ansible can sync to and from itself. And so if you want to ship a large amount of content in a reliable way securely between continents, then people use these, this for that as well. Um, but yeah, you can totally use it to deliver to customers. We hope to have a deeper integration around API key support so that you could ensure that only paying customers are receiving it. Um, other questions? What are we on time?
Um, yes, you can use the remote to um, bring in content from Galaxy. Yeah, but that is like a pull model. It's a pull model, yeah. yep. So you have to connect directly to the data panel then you can use it. Yes, and we, what we recommend doing is wiring it up to uh, like a Tron tab. It's going to run r periodically. Um, a lot of people just like that sync to run nightly and just get all the content in and then they'll figure out how to organize it and roll it out later. Um, Um, that's correct. We currently do not have a feature of syncing from Git. Uh, we have a proof of concept developed, and it's pretty straightforward to finish. We just haven't prioritized it. Uh, importing from Git, directly from Git, right into Pulp Ansible is something we want to do. Uh, I can't speak to whether it will or won't be in satellite. But um, Pulp is the backend software for satellite, but Pulp is plugin based. So for this specific plugin, I, I, I do not know. And both, uh, are they correct here that at the thing about collections, you don't need to sync your git repository into Pulp, you need to sync a collection, which is an artifact that has all contents inside it. And we encourage you to start using collections more actively. Mm -hmm. uh, yes? Yeah, at, I do, exactly. And that's part of our... In Yeah, I, I agree completely. Um, kind of our, our first uh, value proposition that we want to offer our users is uh, really tight integration with the CLI. Um, I think immediately right behind that, it's tight integration with additional sources like Git sources. So one of my takeaways from this conversation is that we've got to finish that work. That's a good takeaway. Uh, other questions? Yes? projects use Django and uh, Django REST framework. And so right off the bat, I can tell you that anything that they support will also be able to support. Um, so it shouldn't be much more than configuring that. Um, if the goal is to have like a zero comp kind of an experience, uh, at least for the pulp side, we're going to do basic uh, username. We're going to do basic stuff. But if you want to wire it to an LDAP or something like that, that's fine. Pulp 2 did a lot of that. Um, we have, we've been testing that really deeply, and so um, I'm pretty proud of our docs at this time in that area. So, yeah, the go on, yes. Yes. Um, are there any other questions? Oh. Um, yeah, can we switch uh, the video input just at least, um, so I can just put up the slide with the links on it, that way at least you have them. I didn't know what I would say at this point in the talk when I told you guys to type in these really long URLs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have anything better to say. I, was, I thought hard. That's what I came up with. Yes. Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I will do that. Thank you so much. All right, we'll do that. Contact us if you have any questions. Love to serve you guys with more questions.